everybody knows somebody who's difficult in their life. Everybody has to deal with difficult people. You may even be the difficult person that people have to deal with. 31% of adults report feeling bullied. 43% say that they believe that the behaviors associated with bullying are becoming more and more prevalent every day. It's never been more important and more critical to learn how to connect with each other. I get requests to speak all over the world, both nationally and internationally, because I'm not your typical motivational speaker. I'm a licensed psychotherapist, as well as a community leader with a 501c3 and a business owner. I've made it my life's work to master the art and skill of connecting with people, especially in the most difficult of circumstances and with the people who seem the most difficult to connect to. No matter what country you live in, or what job you have, what title you hold, what profession you're in, everybody interacts with people. Everybody has relationships in their environment. So who are these difficult people that we interact with? This could be your coworker, good old Bob in accounting. This could be your neighbors. Could be the lady at the grocery store losing her mind over that 75 cent coupon that expired seven years ago for that half eaten piece of fruit she wants to return. This could be volunteers for your organization. I really enjoy speaking, it's a lot of fun. And one of the parts that makes it so much fun is that I get to feel the energy of the audience and I feel them engage with me as I present compelling information that's easy to relate to and connect with. How many of you have ever assumed a leadership position and felt really unprepared for the role? Yeah. How many of you are in leadership, or again, maybe were put into a leadership position and wished that you had more training? Yeah. Me too. 87% of people in a management, executive, or leadership position wish that they had more formal training. The ironic thing is that 99% of companies say that they offer some type of management training. So where's the disconnect? If companies are training us as leaders, why do we feel so unprepared? What I do is informed by research and science. I incorporate brain science and all the data from the most up-to-date and most effective methods. And because I'm a therapist, I have countless hours of working one-on-one -on -one with people, learning what motivates them, what drives them, what causes them to react or respond the way that they do, what do people need the most, and how to create change. Most importantly, I've dedicated my work to helping people connect. And that's what's most important. So how do we do it? How do we start? How do we start shaping these interactions? And how do we start engaging with the people that we find the most challenging and difficult? How do we change these interactions into something more productive and beneficial? Instead of writing people off, pulling the ripcord, walking away, ending the relationship, how do we end up not fighting with our colleagues all the time? There is something that you can do to fix these relationships, to help shape those interactions. And it starts with you. If you are not willing to participate in this, the door of change is closed. You have to be willing to be a part of that change. And you have to be willing to make it intentional. And the way to do that is through connection. And connection is more than just a feeling you get when you're in a positive relationship. 
It's actually a way of relating to each other. And through that relation, you are able to help shape that interaction. And of course, it's really, really challenging to connect with somebody when you're experiencing them as difficult. Believe me, I know. But that is why it is so crucial. It is the most effective way. It is essential for you to be able to develop this skill. Yes, this skill. And I'm gonna tell you how we're gonna develop this skill. I'm not here just to inspire people. I'm here to give them something tangible that they can actually take away and use. It's not enough just to inspire people like a lot of the motivational speakers out there. If people don't have tools or clear direction, then that inspiration just kind of falls short. What I do is I provide people with tools that are practical and tangible that they can take away from the presentation and start implementing today. And they can continue to use these tools forevermore, both in the business environment and in any other organization or personal relationships that they may find themselves in. You want to hire me, you want me at your conference because I'm gonna lay out exactly why you cannot afford to not incorporate these tools that I'm gonna give you in my presentation. The reward is gonna be an investment in your time that's gonna pay itself out continually over and over again. Did you know that 44% of leaders feel unprepared for their role? 87% wish that they had more formal training before entering into a management, an executive, or a leadership role. The ironic thing is that 99% of companies say that they offer some type of management training. So where's the disconnect? If companies are training us as leaders, why do we feel so unprepared? People join companies and they quit managers. So there is a clear disconnect between training and leadership. And I've looked, I've read books, I've listened to podcasts, gone to seminars. Most of the leadership training that I've found that I've come across has been more theoretical, more philosophical. It validates experiences, the hardships that you go through as a leader. But when I entered into a leadership role, I felt like I needed something more tangible, something that gave me some more point by point, explicit takeaways. Most of the leadership experience that I learned was from trial and error. I've sat on boards of executives, board of directors for several organizations. I actually started my own nonprofit for the community of therapists in a very specialized model out in Las Vegas, Nevada, where I live. And I made a common error that I think a lot of you probably have made. We didn't have a lot of people to choose from to put onto our board. It's a 501c3. So you're working off volunteers. And a lot of places don't have the luxury of a huge volunteer pool. So basically, the people who filled the roles on our board were just the ones that we could get to volunteer. And what I found is that a lot of people enter into leadership positions because they want a title. Yeah, I want to be an officer of a nonprofit organization. Put that on my resume, right? Some people like the title of executive. I'm the executive director. I'm the president. I'm the co chair. I'm the co director, right? Or they see prestige that they feel is associated with having those titles and positions. 
I also find is that people think being in leadership is just a nice paycheck. I'm gonna apply for that job and I'm gonna get to tell other people what to do and I'm gonna get paid a whole lot more and I'm gonna have a title. I'm gonna get respect, right? So these people enter into these roles for a variety of reasons. One of my favorite quotes about leadership actually came from a movie. I'll never forget it. The character said, real leaders don't crave power. They're called by necessity. And I think that's how a lot of people ended up creating the nonprofits that they have, is because they knew there was a demand, there was a need that their organization could fill. And they knew if I didn't step up, nobody else is gonna do it, it's not gonna get done. So they went out and they made it happen. They blazed a new trail. And they assumed that the people volunteering for their board, like I did, had those leadership skills. Oh, well, you know, they volunteered for the position of secretary. They must be really good at organization and taking notes. These wonderful expectations as to what the role requires of them. And they, they stood there and said, yes, absolutely. I can complete those roles. What did you find? Was that person sort of, maybe their eyes were bigger than their stomach? Maybe they misrepresented their skills and their qualifications? 